Hello, my name is Jake from Cryonaut Media, and welcome to episode 1 of Cryonaut TV. Today, I'll be using Ableton's analog synth to show you how to reverse engineer presets and help you learn a little bit more about sound design. Alright, so to start off, we're going to go ahead and open up analog here, and then we're going to choose a preset. So number one, you want to make sure you have some good presets. So Ableton comes with a lot of stock ones that are pretty good, but you can also download a whole bunch, which is why you may not see some of these in there. Um, I'm actually going to choose this one right here. And that one is a stock preset. So to go out and find other ones, you just go, go ahead and Google presets for whichever synth you're using. You'll find a ton of them that are free, some that you have to buy. It's up to you which ones you want to choose. So let's go ahead and add a note in here. Down a little bit. So this is what it sounds like just by default. All right, and if you've been paying attention to anything that I've been putting out lately, you'll notice that I have a guide that I made for how to reverse engineer presets. So step number one is always going to be disable the effects, then disable the filter, disable the modulation sources like the LFO envelopes, whatever. Uh, and then you're going to disable each oscillator down to just one. You're going to want to leave one active so that you can hear how it sounds by itself. Um, <clears throat> then you're going to start moving around some of the parameters, some of the settings, and see how those affect that one oscillator. And then you're going to do that for each one. You know, if, there, if you have a separate sub-oscillator, go ahead and do it for that. If you have a noise oscillator, do it for that as well. And then add them all back together and see how they all sound at once. You know, see how they complement each other. And then you're going to start re-enabling those things you just disabled. Um, the important part about this is you're going to enable, let's say, that the LFOs, and then you're going to start changing some of those settings and just see how does the sound change now when I turn this knob. You know, make sure you, you, you figure out why the sound sounds how it does. Um, so go ahead and add back the envelopes and LFOs. Add back the filter. Notice which kind of filter it is, the cutoff position, uh, anything else that has their resonance, etc., uh, and then you're going to add the effects back in one by one. And just realize that depending on which effects are there, these can make crazy changes to the sound. So go really slowly with these and just try to see how does the sound change with this one. And, you know, figure out which ones you like, which ones you don't. Okay, so with Ableton's analog, you have your effects over here. Uh, it's limited to just vibrato, unison, and glide. Nothing too fancy. Uh, the LFOs are right here, your amps are right here, filters are right here, and then these are your oscillators. You have two oscillators, a noise oscillator, and then inside of each one, you have your sub over here that you can or don't have to use if you don't want to. So with Ableton's synths and effects even, they look pretty simple up front, but a lot of times you can click on each individual section and you have all kinds of more parameters and settings inside here. So... Make sure you don't forget any of those things. All right, let's go ahead and disable all these. Uh, leave the amp on, otherwise you won't get any sound. Um, and don't worry about which ones were on or which ones are off for now. We'll go ahead and fix that later. We just want to go down to one oscillator. So here we have just a square wave. So by itself, it sounds like that. You can see it's tuned down two octaves. It's going all the way to filter one. Um, and here we have a tiny bit of pitch and... Uh, no sub, so make sure you just look at all that. So if we adjust some of these parameters, this is pretty obvious what that does. More tuning. And here, don't worry about these down here. This is with the LFO, which won't do anything until you turn it back on. And over here. Pretty cool stuff sometimes. Um, so yeah, you can do all that. And then we go back down to oscillator 2, which is a sine wave. Barely audible. Uh, and you can see this one has a sub. It's pretty turned up pretty high. <clears throat> so again, you want to make sure you look at all these settings. Go ahead and play with them a little bit more. Um, you know, see which different sh what the shapes do. So... This is what a sawtooth would sound like at this octave tuned down to. Yeah, this is 
this one. And then let's go to the noise one. This is so quiet you can't even really hear it. It's really just adding a tiny bit of background to kind of fill out the whole sound. So now since we made a bunch of changes and I don't even remember which ones were all turned on, we'll add back in this. And then we'll see, all right, we have LFO1, we have vibrato and unison. Um, and so with all the, these together, it sounds like that. You have the nice sub from the, the sine wave, you have a little bit higher harmonics with the saw wave, or the square wave. And then these are all going to filter one only. So let's turn that on and see what that does now. So that's where a major part of this sound is actually changing. And the reason for that is going to be the frequency is turned down so low that it's cutting off, it's getting rid of all of the frequencies above 128 hertz. It's pretty low. Um, but then it's adding a resonance of 60%, which adds that higher pitch that you hear. So if you turn down this resonance, it just sounds pretty much like a sine wave. Not too much else there. But as you add this back in, it adds that higher frequency. And then uh, you see it's a low pass, uh, 24 decibels. So the frequency, if we just that, Let's in more of the higher pitch stuff. So we get rid of the resonance, you can actually hear it. And then once it's all the way up, it just sounds like the filter was turned off. It just sounds like all those waves together. So let's go ahead and redo that. So now let's add the LFO back in. Uh, and see how that sounds. So this is a very slight effect. You may not be able to hear it right now. Um, but let's see if we can find out what's happening. Over here is it's adjusting the pitch by barely anything. You can't even really hear that. Um, it's just adding a slight little wobble sound. So the sound goes up and down in pitch just a tiny amount. Um, and that basically just gives it a little bit of life, a little bit of movement. So it's a nice, nice, nice little add-on to the sound to kind of keep it from sounding static and stale. Okay, um, so in the LFO, what you're going to want to do is change the rate a little bit, um, you know, change the, the wave, and then you'll kind of see how that adjusts it. And maybe this is not a great preset to try it on, but when you're preset, go ahead and mess with this a little bit. See what it does. So let's see if we can tell any kind of difference here. See, there you can kind of hear it. You hear that little... little Lippy sound. That's from the LFO here. You can adjust the width. And as in this synth, you can kind of see right here how it affects the waveform, um, which is really nice. Others don't do that, and it may be a little bit difficult to tell how the sound is actually changing. Um, and then over here, the rate, this is, you know, the most important thing for an LFO, I think. Um, you can either have it go by hertz or by the rate of, and you know, this will go by your, your clock in your DAW. Um, you know, the typical dubstep wobble, you'll use this and you can sync it so it actually sounds good and it's really a lot easier to, to adjust it. So the higher you go, the faster it's going to cycle through. this lower it's going to go. Let's go ahead and reset that again. Um, and so now we're back to effects. So we have the vibrato here, which is actually turned off. I'm not really sure why it's on. Um, but then we have unison. So this is where it's going to make a big difference in the sound again. Uh, so um, because it's detuned up 37, that's a pretty high amount. It's 0 to 100 in, in this one. Um, it creates a whole bunch of Let's see how many we have. Eight voices here that are all detuned from each other quite a bit. So they're all going to kind of be fighting for that space. So let's hear how it sounds. This is without. And this is with. Here it's a very kind of wavy sound. Um, so the more you do, you'll start hearing higher and lower pitches. You'll hear them fight more. 
does it, but it's a very slight effect. And then this is the final sound. All right, so there we've just reverse engineered the preset. We've gone through the whole thing. We've uh, taken away each element individually and then seen how by adding in just the filter, adding in the LFO, adding in the effects, you can see how the sound changes and grows throughout the process. So the next step is to now recreate that preset. So let's go over here and duplicate it. So what we want to do is just add in a basic analog on this one. So this is just the stock, you know, initialized preset, nothing there. This is what it sounds like. Just the basic here, we got, you know, two, this, two saw waves going through a filter that's all the way open. So two saw waves, that's it. So then what you're going to do is go back and forth between each one. Uh, you know, so first you're going to pick the oscillator. Oops. Uh, the first oscillator, you know, look at all these different settings. Come over here, copy them. You know, change all these settings. Uh, then you're going to do that for the, the noise one as well, oscillator 2. In this case, it's only filter 1. Don't worry about filter 2 and amp 2 or LFO 2. Um, but do filter 1. Look at the amp, change these, set, these settings, the LFO, and then fi finish up by changing anything in here. So make sure you got two octaves, you know, eight voices, two voices of unison. Anything else down here, you know, these effects. So go through each set individually and make all those changes. And then, uh, you know, then you're going to compare them back and forth, A, B them, make sure they sound the same. And then once you have it there, then you've actually gone through the process of rebuilding that preset which really helps you learn how to make these changes and what things actually affect it. When you're just looking at it, that's one thing, but you don't actually learn a whole lot. When you rebuild it, that's when you're really going to notice, you know, cool things about this synth or how it works or something you had no idea that synth could even do. So go ahead and do that, and then uh, I'll check back with you in a second. <laughs> finish going through and making all the changes in there. Uh, go ahead and make the changes even if you're not sure what it does. Just do it anyway and it's okay. Uh, and don't forget in Ableton you can type in those numbers because it's really hard to get super accurate sometimes. So now what we're going to do is uh, A-B them, make sure that they sound the same and see if we missed anything. So here's the original sound. And here's my new sound that I just recreated. Sounds pretty good. Let's A, B, and back and forth and see if that we notice any differences. I think it sounds pretty good. So there you go. Uh, that's how you reverse engineer a preset and then rebuild it from scratch in order to learn, one, how your synth works a little bit more, and two, how that preset was put together so that you can kind of use some of those pieces of it maybe in your own sound design. So I look forward to hearing from you guys how this goes for you. If you have any questions, always let me know. And uh, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe. And I will see you next time.